In this video, we're going to derive a confidence interval for the population median using order statistics. So a little background, our data follows some distribution F, where F is continuous. We're going to let capital M be the population median, and that's what we want to develop the confidence interval for. So because M, cap M, is the median uh, the CDF of M, which is the probability of X being less than M, is one half. And then, then the uh, if we take uh, F inverse to both sides, we get what's called the quantile function. So M is the quantile of one half, which is the same as this. And these functions are built in R. In in the example, we'll have a link to illustrate how to calculate these in R. The sample median. If, if the sample size is odd, it's just the middle value. If it's even, then it's the average of the two middle values. And it should be noted, M is a consistent estimator of cap M, which means as the sample size increases, the sample median approaches M with probability 1. But to develop the confidence interval for the median, we want to find some R and S. And now these are order statistics of our sample. So this is the R largest value and this is the S largest value. And we want to pick two values such the probability the, of containing the median is 1 minus alpha. And again, you know, they have to be R is less than S. So if we look at a picture of what's going on, so if this is R and this is S and for the median, wherever wherever it is on the axis, we want um, we want r y r to be less than the median, so we're in this region. But we want y s to be larger than the median, so this is the area that we want to calculate. And but if we, we're going to simplify this a little bit. That, so if we look at the region Y less than M, so that's this area here. That's all of this. And then if we just subtract off YS less than the median, which is this, it leaves just this. So we're going to calculate, it ends up being easier to calculate the probability that YR is less than median and then subtract off the probability that YS is less than the median. Okay, So this is what we're going to deal with. So now, let, and we're going to focus on one of these because if we realize how to calculate this, then this one is pretty straightforward. So a, a few notes that, that uh, the CDF is a strictly increasing function in uh, you know when f is continuous and because of that the probability that yr is less than the median we can take uh, cap f of both sides so the probability that the cdf of yr is less than f of m well f of m we know is a half because that's the median that's by definition well the exciting part about this cap f of yr it can be shown that that is the rth order statistic from a uniform distribution over 0 to 1. So the, this value, call it UR, where UR is the rth order statistic from a uniform from 0 to 1. Okay, so this, you know, while the original probability, you know, we think depends upon the original F, you know, the original distribution of F, our data, it ends up not being dependent upon the original X. We just, it, it depends upon a uniform distribution, the art order statistic from a uniform distribution. Well, the art order statistic can be shown to be a beta distribution. So now to calculate this probability that YR is less than the median is the same as the probability that the CDF of YR is less than a half. Well, because F of YR is a beta distribution, this is what's called an incomplete beta distribution. So we're integrating a data, uh, 
the beta distribution from zero to one half. And this is the notation that's commonly used for a, a incomplete beta function. But this is the way my mind works is, and this is a beta function with the with r and n minus r plus one, you know, for the alpha and the beta parameters in this. And so we're integrating from zero to one. Now I have another video which I'll put a link in the description that that associates an incomplete beta function with the sum of binomial weights. So this is equal to these this sum. And since it's a one half, those can be combined into one half to the n. So this probability is as simple as summing from r to n by when a binomial distribution with parameter one half. Okay. So now the same thing can be said for the probability that ys is less than m. It can be written as the sum of binomials from s to n, not not r to n. Well, now if we look at again at this probability, this is of interest, and we could take this minus that. Well, each of those are sums of binomials. So we're going from r to s, and then we're going to subtract off s to n. Now remember, s is larger than n. So the top, hat, top piece of this goes away which is this. So we're summing from R to S minus one of this. And then we want that to be greater than one minus alpha. So now to find a confidence interval, we just have to find an R and an S that satisfies this relationship. And we're finished. And to me that it's, it's sort of surprising that it works <laughs> but the theory is there and I have uh, an example using the R statistical software uh, illustrating all these with several examples I do a, a simulation of uh, 10,000 observations from multiple distributions to show that it does work but anyway I hope you liked it uh, uh, subscribe and I will talk with you later